The Angle Slam. Podcast. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it always makes me laugh with the slight delay of you saying podcast. Yeah, I try not to do it, but I'll, I'll, I'll end up interrupting you at one point, and it will just go tits up. So, <laughs> but the Angle Podcast Alpha. Oh, um, yes, anyway, hello. Hello, everybody. We're back. It's been well, it's been a week, hasn't it, really? Uh, yeah, we did an Angle Lock one. Uh, uh, we had a gap, and then we had the Angle Lock, and now we, here we are a week later. Doing, uh, doing cock. But, Doing cock, yeah, but, <laughs> but this is it. It's a pay per view one, so it's slightly different. Um, but yeah, uh, for the majority, I actually liked this. Yeah, there's a lot to dissect in this in this entire pay per view. Really, it's not it's not a bog standard paint by numbers pay per view. This one. Yeah, it was extremely interesting to say the least, and most of it is w- with a positive outlook. Yeah. Really. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I'll let you do your yeah. So you sure um, like you know you know the drill by now, everybody. You've known it for a long time. For people that listen every single time, like, subscribe, SoundCloud, YouTube, Stitcher, Apple Music, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just Angle Slam Podcast. You'll find us somewhere. Um, and we're going to review Clash of Champions. And we, have we got any deaths that we're dedicating this one to? We do. We do have one big one, really. Uh, Road Warrior Animal. That was it. Uh, that was it. I knew there was one. From the Legion of Doom, um, I, I'm, I'm not really sure on the circumstance of his death because he, he was only sixty. I, I say only; it's you know that's a, a pension of age, but yeah. it's still still not a good age to go, is it? Yeah, but uh, yeah, he's up there with his partner Hawk now, so there's a, a, a reunion, tag team reunion there. But yeah, uh, as far as I know, it wasn't like. Uh, I, didn't, I was going to say it wasn't tragic, but of course it's tragic. But it wasn't like an accident or yeah. uh, exactly out of nowhere. It was just one of those things that age and health and all that. Just it was one of those times. It was his time. Yeah. So yeah, that's animal. Just to add on the like and subscribe thing. Um, I don't know if you say this or not because it's kind of white noise now. But for those listeners, share as well. Yeah, yeah, yes, good point. I mean, yeah, I thought that would go without saying, but yeah, you got a point. Yeah, share everybody. If you yeah. see this, yeah. just just share. Be nice. Be be nice to other people. <laughs> we we don't get money yeah. for this. Just share it to people that like wrestling. It, it's a dark world out there already. So share with each other, and we'll so, brine yeah. it up by yeah. swearing about wrestling a lot. Yes, yes. But uh, did you uh, watch the free show? No, I didn't watch the pre-show because I never really do. Uh, originally, it was meant to. I, I would have watched it had it been what the original thing was meant to be, which was meant to be Asuka versus Selena Vega on the pre-show. But they changed it at the last yeah. minute to put uh, the SmackDown tag titles on the pre-show, all because of the match card changes that happened due to COVID and everything. Um, yeah. So no, I didn't watch the pre-show. I heard it was pretty much ninety percent offense by Cesaro and Shinsuke, and then they just won. Yeah, it was all right. Um, I'll, I'd probably say uh, that Lucha House Party got their uh, fair amount of offence on there, and they're very creative with what they do. Um, it, was, it there was nothing really bad about it. It was just kind of your your bog standard tag team match. But in my head, because of that whole controversy between the Grand Matalik Cesaro match on SmackDown with Vince's reaction to it, uh, and then being put on the pre-show. I just thought maybe Cesaro and Grand Matalik would go out with a chip on their shoulder going, right, let, let's show him what we can actually do here because, you know, this is ridiculous. But it was okay. It, there was nothing really to, to boo about. Um, I, I was glad the card thing was changed. I yeah. know we said it was due to COVID and that would have been a main reason. Yeah. But just the fact that when they first announced like Raw Women's Championship on the pre-show, I think, oh, really? Yeah, I was really annoyed by that. It's like, not only is it Asuka, the person that's, during this COVID era, has been the one to call upon when things go shit. She's really, really yeah. stepped up her game during this COVID time. Um, and then Selena Vega to get her first ever title opportunity and have it be on the pre-show. I was like, what are you thinking? But, you know, luckily, yeah. things changed. Yeah, I just thought with all this time and effort you've made to not just make the women's division mean something, but the women's championships as well. It's mm. like, you really want to try and undo that work by throwing this on the pre-show. It, 
it should be deemed as the, the women's championship should be deemed as just as important as the universal and WWE, in my opinion. Um, so, but when they put Cesaro, Metali, oh, so sorry, Cesaro and Shinsuke versus the Lucha House Party on the pre-show, it was like, okay, fair enough. But I thought, is this also a another dig because Vince wasn't happy with their SmackDown match, and B, I would have chose the Raw tag titles in the pre-show. Yeah, because that's um, like the 17th time that we've seen these guys go at it for that title. So yeah, I'd agree. I yeah. would have switched them out. Uh, but the, with the smack, uh, with the um, the women's tag match, it didn't even happen because of the whole COVID thing and whatnot. But they didn't give us an excuse, like they didn't mo- give us any reason why. I mean, they kind of haven't had a wish washy thing with Nikki Cross saying she was unable to compete. But with the tag titles, yeah. there was nothing. It was like it wasn't even mentioned, like it wasn't even meant to be part of the pay per view, and that was really annoying yeah. that they couldn't even be bothered to come up with even a lame excuse. I, I'm not sure if they mentioned it over commentary slightly or not, but they definitely mentioned it on WWE.com because uh, as soon as the, the pre-show change happened of like, why is the SmackDown tag titles happening not the Asuka match now? I was automatically like, when was this announced? So I did my research and found out... They, they didn't pull any punches with it or make up a storyline that just said, this match isn't happening due to COVID-19 and... Pretty much the same with Nikki versus Bailey. So we expect, you know, cards to change. Um, but also, again, we know we had a crystal ball, but uh, we'll get to the Raw tag titles, obviously, later in the podcast. Yeah. But we knew how that was going to end. Yeah, it probably would have been better on the pre show, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll, yeah, we'll, so, we'll get to it. yeah. So, should we kick off with the, the main card then? I mean, what was first? Yeah, it, yeah. Was the, it was the ladder oh, match, just, weren't it? Yeah, just quick on Shinsuke and Cesaro one. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, opening. Open. Yeah. Um, Th- this, I mean, I, to be honest, like, I mean, AJ versus Sammy versus um, yeah. Jeff is, when I was looking at it, I was like, this is kind of like a dream match of sorts. Like, these three are awesome. Yeah. And then there's a ladder match thrown into the mix for the Intercontinental title. I was like, this this is a great idea. And then having it open yeah. and just deliver the way that these guys delivered this match, I have got no problems with this match at all. I thought the story was really well told. I thought the spots were absolutely ridiculous, especially some of the ones that Jeff were doing. Even I was like, do you really have to be doing that at this time of life, Jeff? But you are. Yeah. Um, the, the bumps that were happened, the story that was told, everything that happened with Sami Zayn, the handcuffs and all that kind of stuff was brilliant. I just, I can't grumble about this. Like, my head was going... Jeff's definitely winning this, but my heart wanted Sammy, and so happy that my heart won, ran, won through. Like so I can't believe that Sammy yeah. actually won it. I'm really, really happy with that. Considering the fact that he had a lot of backstage heat a few months ago, I'm surprised they gave yeah. it him. But yeah, I, honestly, this match was incredible. Well, yeah, this um, to me, uh, this would be a match of the year kind of it for me. I yes, mean, it's kind of slim pickings anyway, match of the year because of the circumstances of wrestling at the minute. Um, but, yeah, when they when I knew it was opening, I thought, right. Uh, I, I always have, like, mixed emotions about when they do stuff like this because it's like, okay, wow, what an opener. Again, even just a normal triple threat, this is a dream match, like you say, but to throw a ladder in there and because these kind of titles are kind of synonymous with ladder matches anyway. Um, but... That was the point where I was like, I was that confident this match would be great. I was like, how are they going to follow it? You know what I mean? It, it, so how, it, they, how are they going to live up to the hype? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So, so like I said, and it still blows me away sometimes after all this time with the amount of ladder matches they, that have been. The creativity is still there to yeah. do something new. Yeah, there was two or three and, spots in this, in this match where I thought, I've not seen that before. Yeah, when Jeff landed on his ribs and the upside down ladder. Oh, mate, like, honestly, oh, as soon as I yeah. saw it was upside down, I was like, oh, don't do this, Jeff. You don't need to do this. And he did it. And I was like, you, oh, my God. Because like, there's no way that you can you can bump that properly without hurting yourself. There is no way. You are, you are just going to have to throw caution to the wind and get your ass hurt. He looked genuinely hurt to the <laughs> yeah. point I thought, look, I won't be surprised if you have broke your ribs there. Um, I think there was a spot later on quite... Uh, pretty much straight after, I think Sammy got hip tossed onto a ladder 
bounced off the ladder and onto the top rope and kind of springboarded like, back onto the ladder again. Head onto the ladder. Yeah. I, was, I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but holy shit, it looked good and dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, there was a lot of spots in there that we've already seen before, but they're still great. Like the swan song to Sammy through the ladder. Yeah. Just amazing. It, it, it was like a car wreck. Just bang. Um, unfortunately, it made it feel like AJ was kind of the third wheel in this whole thing. Yeah, which, mean, which, which is weird because he's still a, yeah. But I think to be honest, I reckon that maybe AJ's look decided. Look, this is my last run in WWE. I'm in my mid forties. I've done plenty of bumping in the past for other promotions. I don't want to do too many bumps because no. <laughs> so I'll just let Jeff do it because he's happy to do it and Sammy's young enough that he can recover. I don't really want to do too much. So because he only bumped a couple of times and they weren't even that bad compared to the others. So maybe no. that's the reason it felt like a third wheel was that he was like potentially he was reluctant to do those bumps. Like, he would do what he can, but he's not going to go crazy like Jeff does. No, he was... Uh, the spots he was involved with with the ladders, he was more on the offence of it. Like, I think he lobbed uh, one of the mini step ladders at Sammy. Yeah, knocked him off. Into the ring. Well, yeah, he did the replay. He showed the replay. He did kind of just miss, and Sammy kind of had to reach his hands out to get the impact. But it was like, OK, whatever. But, um, yeah, from the get-go... My head was going to be, it's going to be Jeff or Sammy. I never thought AJ was going to take it. Um, one of the main reasons I thought Jeff was going to win was, again, like we say with the Sammy controversy, is he going to be like, right, yeah, you walked out on us, we're not going to give you the belt back just yet. But luckily, they went with, no, nah, let's give it back and you know, pick up where we left off. Um, the handcuff through Jeff's earlobe oh, to the ladder. That was ingenious. Oh, like, I mean, that was bad. Brilliant. That was bad enough seeing that. Like, that's incredible. That's ingenious. That's brilliant for Sammy's character. That's a lot of fun. I've not seen it before. And then to add on top of that, where he handcuff tries to handcuff AJ to the ladder, then he realizes that he's not going to be able to get up there, so he handcuffs AJ to himself to make it basically say, if I, if 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 I'm not winning this. No one's winning this. And then to pop out the key from his mouth, unhook and go up and take the titles. Just everything about his little plan with the handcuffs was brilliant. But this is it. When the, the, the thing happened where he obviously was trying to handcuff AJ to uh, he was either rope or under the ladder, AJ reversed it. But he was like, <laughs> you handcuffed to me, whatever. When AJ carried on going up anywhere with Sammy on his shoulders, my first reaction was like, well, why isn't Sammy doing the offense? And pretty much straight after, I was like, He's letting AJ do the dirty work for him. He's letting him carry him up the ladder. <laughs> yeah. and it wasn't until after the match when they showed the replay that I even realised the key was in Sammy's mouth. Just like, oh, here we go. And, and oh, genius. It worked with his character so well of just this. He's got that arrogance and yet he can't back it up and he doesn't care. He's, he's like, his arrogance of I'm the best and yet he clearly cheats to win. And he doesn't care that we know that he cheats to win, which makes him such a hateable heel because it's like, why don't you care that we know you're cheating, you <laughs> fuck? Yeah, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed everything about this match. I yeah. thought it was really good, really solid. Uh, yeah, and it should be up there for match year candidate, in my opinion. Yeah, 100%. But, so I think, as well, spoiler alert, I think it was the only major title change that night. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Technically, yeah, there was the R Truth shit, but let's not let, let's that. not worry about that. It's just the same shit yeah. as always. He loses it to someone and then he gains it back. End of story. Let's move on. Within the night, within the night, the morning, it was like a week later. But Jesus Christ, pointless. But, um, yeah, next was uh, the Raw Women's Championship. Yes, um, it was fine. I mean, it was all right, but yeah. the, I mean, Zelina Vega didn't do too bad. Um, but I think the main culprit for this is that they just they weren't given enough time. They were only out there for about six to seven minutes, and they just didn't get enough to kind of get a rally going. I felt like I was getting to the point where I was like, right, we're going to get pushed to the finish here, and then suddenly it was just over. So yeah. I was kind of annoyed because I wanted a bit more out of it because I wanted to see what Zelina could do. She wasn't amazing, but she you know she was good enough for me to to want to see more. I mean, they've definitely put the threads forward to continue this feud because they did like a respect thing at the end and then she booted her and started wailing on her anyway yeah. so that was great that was real yeah. good heel tactic i like it um and i'm actually interested with vega and Asuka to continue feuding as as long as they give them a little bit more time so 
it's, it, it was an okay start up to this feud, but I, I just wanted a bit more out of it, really. Yeah, I mean, time might be a factor to it. I mean, again, fine is a, a good word to describe the match. It wasn't like jaw dropping. It wasn't bad. It was just it was there, and there's, and there's no really knocks to it. But because what I do remember from it is uh, quite early on, Zelina started working on, I believe it was Asuka's arm. Yeah. Um, which was like, okay, she's got a game plan. Yeah, this is good, but. From the get go, I never really believed Zelina was going to take it just yet. No. Because she's very green. She's she's been mainly you know the the manager for Andrade and Angel and that thing. She's just getting into the uh, the competition side of it. So maybe as far as like the non K fave goes, um, she was following Asuka's lead. This is more like okay, you're in the title picture, but this isn't your time to win the championship. This is your time to learn and craft. And, you know, you know, just so happens, be- maybe because of COVID or maybe just someone thought, let's do it. They go, this storyline is created to get you experience. Yeah. Plus, I, 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 yeah, I think I agree with you on that. But I also think that the main reason they put this together is because they needed someone to go against Asuka because it was Clash of Champions. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. But, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm glad that they went for a new face. I'm glad they didn't just go for someone she's been against before. I'm glad they went for someone that hasn't. Um, but, yeah, there has. I think it ha- at the end of this, it has potential to be a good feud. Yeah, I mean, Zelina didn't do it too bad at all. I think I would have bought slightly more into it if... Yeah, it was great that she was working on Asuka's arm. But there was no, like, she's working on it because... Asuka's already really hurt it on the ring post or between the steps or something. There was no... It was just like a methodical stain on the arm, not because it's already injured. Yeah, she didn't, yeah, she didn't injure it. She just kind of went, right, well, I've just picked a body part and I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, part of wrestling, it's fine, but it, the believability would have been if Asuka had gone for something, whacked her arm really badly on the, the ring post and Zelina kept going at it, it would have put that thought in my head of like, is this what's going to cost Asuka the championship because she's really hurt? Yeah, it makes it a little um, bit more believable. Yeah. So, yeah, I did like the end segment with all the roll-ups and all the reversals and obviously Asuka lock game over. Um, then, obviously, I genuinely thought the handshake, would, well, after the handshake was kind of wiped away, when the bow came in, for about five seconds, I thought, oh, right, okay, genuine respect. Yeah. And then right before I thought, now, this, here comes the turn, and then bang, I was like, oh, you bitch. <laughs> but the, the, yeah, I suppose it's not a problem, but when Asuka grabbed the mic and ranted at her, I just thought, we don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> you know, but this the thing, is like, I, I feel bad, because like, I think she can be mo- the most passionate when she's talking in her own language, as we all would be, be. Or, naturally. Be. But the problem is, like you said, a lot of us that don't understand what she's saying but I don't really want, at the same breath, I don't really want her to just stand there and do English because she can't put that passion for her when she's trying to speak English on top of trying to cut a promo. So it's kind of like, yeah. I don't really know what they can do with it, really. So I think, like I said, that they've done the best of a bad situation in the case of let's just let her talk her own language and go nuts because if she can hype it up enough with that kind of aggressiveness, I, I don't really yeah. need to know what she's saying. I'm pretty sure she's saying, I'm going to kick your ass, I'm going to get you back. And that's pretty much what she's saying. I think her probably that the whole point of a mic is for everyone, you know, in normal, regular circumstances, for everyone in the arena and everyone at home to, you know, hear what you say. That's the point. Now, number one, we can pretty much hear what you say without a mic with the circumstances anyway. There's no fucker there. And number two is just like, you could have done that entire thing without the mic. Just pure anger, yeah, yelling true. at her. Yeah, that's true. Tub. Uh, I genuinely thought it was either going to lead to her go challenging her to like a rematch down the line with some kind of major stipulation, and then I thought, is she challenging her to get back in the ring now? Like saying, "I'm back." Yeah, here. that I'll that give the shot right now. yeah, that was the thing I thought. I thought maybe they were, she was going to ke- tell the ref to restart the match or something like that. Be, be, yeah. Only because it, obviously the match didn't go very long, so I thought, oh, maybe they're going to add a couple of extra minutes on or something. But no, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, even when I thought that thought, the, uh, the very next thought was, if this happens, I think Zelina's going to take it. Well, yeah, she would, yeah. But just the way the storyline was going. 
But obviously it didn't. It was just, you know, disrespect and that kind of asterisk next to this isn't over kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, ask us to you win the champion. Uh, next was the United States Championship. Yeah, so it was Bobby Lashley versus Apollo Crews. Um, Hurt Business came out with it. I, I, do, I love the Hurt Business. I'm loving everything about them. I, I really am enjoying them at the moment. Um, Ricochet came out with Apollo and, as usual, just not being utilised in the slightest. I did think at one point, wonder if Ricochet will turn on him like everybody else is. Da- yeah, I thought, oh, that would be amazing. I mean, that would give like such a freshness to Ricochet being he's not being used, but, you know, they didn't. Um, yeah, but um, the match itself wasn't... It wasn't too bad. It was a, it was a reasonable match. I quite enjoyed it. It was it did what it needed to do. The only problem is that we've seen it a few times now, and it's like it, this has to be the end. It has to be the end yeah. of the feud now. Like I'm done with this feud. I don't need them to continue. I, I I think that's it. To be honest. Yeah, I think unfortunately, literally about ten minutes before this podcast, I was thinking about this match. I thought, you know what? I can't remember anything from it really because. Uh, yeah, the ricochet thing, I was thinking, keeping an eye on it, of like, you know, maybe he's out there for a reason. Uh, the Hurt Business are interesting to me because they seem to be a heel stable, yeah, and yet they're not doing heel tactics. You know, not once have they interfered on behalf of Lashley to help him win. Um, so, I don't know. It, also... It was one of those matches where I thought, right, this could have been on the pre-show because it was another rematch. However, yeah. I would have still been bitching a man ago and I really throwing the US title back on the pre-show. So it was a kind of doomed time place, uh, the placement for that match. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was just kind of like they didn't really... I don't know why they didn't think of either a stipulation or a new opponent for Lashley before Clash of Champions, um, because Apollo could have had his rematch at Raw a few weeks prior. Um, but hey-ho, I mean, like you say, hopefully this is the end of that story with Apollo and Lashley. Lashley cemented himself as the US champion now. What's next? Yeah. So, yeah, it just it just wasn't the match that stood out at all that night. Yeah, it, 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 it was there, but it wasn't, it wasn't amazing. Yeah. It, like I said, I'm just, I'm just kind of hoping that this is the end of the feud now. This has got to be the over, it over now. It has to be. Yeah. It was kind of one of them where it had to be there because of the theme of the pay-per-view. Yeah. You know, every title was meant to be on the line, despite COVID and all that shit. So, yeah. Uh, next was the Raw Tag Team Championship. Yeah, and again, this is just it's another perfect. match that I just can't believe we're seeing this match again and again and again and again. It's just ridiculous. Like I can't, like, I, I, I still can't believe that they actually decide to go for these guys again because they've been feuding for these titles since WrestleMania. Yeah. So it's, it's I, I, I literally don't know why we're still at, still at this point. I mean, I, I'm hoping that this is the end of the feud, like, like it is with the US title. The only problem is the way that the match ended. Uh, obviously down to botchings and injuries and all this kind of stuff that happened with Gaza. It's just, I'm thinking that maybe because of the kind of miscommunication from everybody, because not everybody knew they were running to the finish because of an injury, that they're going to have to go for this again. And I really hope that they don't, because the match wasn't terrible, but I just, I'm so over it. I'm just so over it. Yeah, it's kind of become... not. Just that the whole story and tag things become a clusterfuck. But the division kind of has. I, I mean, the last few years, they've obviously going, let's really focus on strengthening the women's division. Yeah. And they've been very successful at it. But it seems to be accidentally at the expense of the tag team division. Um, that, you know, a few injuries here and there have caused problems, obviously, but the, the Viking Raiders are out. AOP are just gone. Um and it's like, what tag teams have we actually got right now? You know, genuine well, the thing tag is, like, Yeah, I was going to say, the genuine tag teams, piece by piece, they're being fucking split up. Every other tag team that's been coming into being, ones that have been separate people, they're being put together constantly. And although there's a couple out there that, you know, are pretty good, like the Nia Jax and Shane thing I quite like, overall, it's yeah. just like, well, why are we doing this? Why can't we build actual tag teams? If you're going to make new tag teams, actually make them... 
like a proper tag team, not just something that we know full well. This is just because you haven't got anything else for them, and they're just going to be like that for a little while until they're single again. Yeah, this is it. We've spoke about um, the problem with the street profits, and I've got zero problem with them because just, just you know, sometimes you go back to the, the matter at hand. As far as the match, it was one of those when it came up. I was like, "This is the match where I'm probably going to switch off because it's been done a million times before." But for what I saw, I was thinking this might actually be the best of their series right now. It was very high, fast and it, high paced. It probably was. But but, yeah, it probably was. It's yeah. just I, I just didn't care. That was the problem. That's it. It's the care thing. So it's like with the street profits. Uh, I do kind of like them, um, but because they're already tag team champions, it's like, well, why am I supporting them? They're already at the top. Mm. And, uh, you, it, it should have been a slow burn. I'm like, these guys are cool. These guys get momentum. Uh, they're, they're beginning to remind me of early New Day, of this positive energy, and yet the fans at the first are kind of going, yeah, well, we're not sure about this, you know. But as far as them having the tag titles, it's like, well, who else could hold them right now? The only well, that's the thing. Like, the, yeah, that's the thing. Right. They are literally the only tag team. That's the thing. It's like everybody else has just been randomly chucked together. So of course they're yeah. going to have the tag titles. I, I agree. I I thought a long ago that the the Street Profits they grabbed the titles far too soon. They should have been the yeah. guys that built up to this amazing like fairy tale ending story at WrestleMania or something where they finally got them off the dastardly heels. But they just randomly got them put on them. And ever since, they've just kind of held them and been feuding with yeah. these guys. And it's just, it's they've had such a lacklustre run. And it's, it really is such a shame. Yeah, they're just, they're just there, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're just, just there. Like, they're just there. It's like... <laughs> It's kind of going like if I'm a if you're describing it to well, either a non WWE fan or a child or whatever, it'd be like Drew McIntyre is your WWE champion. He's top of the food chain. Um, Asuka is Raw Women's champion. She's top of the women's division. Street Profits got the Raw tag title. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's not. It's not like they're top of the, their division. They just they're just got there. The title. Yeah. So I mean, let's. Yeah, let, let, I mean, not, not no. I mean, let, let's talk about like the end of this match. Obviously, something yeah. went catastrophically wrong with Angel Garza. Uh, there was rumours something to do with like it might have been a busted hip or something, or maybe a, tra- a torn quad. But I think it might have been yeah. might have been towards lean towards the hip kind of thing. Um, I don't yeah. know where it, I don't know where it happened, but obviously it did. And I was like, well, something's going wrong here because he's trying to tag out from to Andrade and he can't even lift himself up. No. And then I saw the ref put the X up and I was like, oh God, here we go. I was like, something really bad has happened. And they kind of rushed to the finish. The problem is there was no communication to everybody saying we've got to go to the finish. So that yeah. when he kicked out, because he kicked out at two, he didn't kick out at three. Yeah. He kicked out at two, 100%. I wasn't even confident that his shoulder was properly on the mat. And then they called for the bell. And even Dawkins was looking around going confused. And just you could yeah. see the Street Profits were pissed off at the end of it because of the lack of communication from the commentators to the ref to, to everybody. And that's the, that is the, the main problem with this, is that there was such a lack of communication right at the end there that... Yes, I understand you have to rush to the finish because someone is generally injured. But literally, you know, give it a minute or two. Talk to everybody. Say, we're going to the finish. Let's do this. And just be quick on the fly. Don't just go, oh, we're going to go to the finish and not inform everybody. And so everybody's perplexed and confused by the end of it. Because we're going to notice. Because, of course, we will. Well, yeah, it's one of them where I'm, I'm kind of forgiven because it was one of them that had to be called quickly on the fly to the point that obviously the, the the medics would have been ringside checking on Angel. And at that point, they probably wouldn't have known either what the injury was or the severity. So while the match was going on with Andrade and the Street Profits, obviously communication wouldn't be going on backstage with Vince uh, from the medics going, he's hurt bad. But all we know, when um, the spine buster was hit on uh, Andrade and the cover was done, Vince might have just said to the ref at, during the count, do the three, because they even fed the audio of the crowd ch- uh, counting three when there wasn't. A yeah. three. It was a very quick thing to do. It was a cock up. It was a complete clusterfuck, which is why the profits and all that were confused. But I can't knock it because at the end of the day, he did it for the safety of these 
is wrestlers to try and get a medical attention ASAP. Yeah, I know. I understand the I understand the seriousness of it. I just feel like there could have been a, a slight, you know, an <clears throat> extra thirty seconds of cohesion to make sure that it didn't look like such a botch. Yeah, I mean that's it. I mean, we're we're never going to know the situation of whether the ref didn't have the time to communicate or did say this is it and people misheard or someone didn't know. We're never going to know. All we do know is, um, you know, Angel's hurt and that's why the match went down the way it did. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if it's a hip, I don't, you know, if it's a hip injury, I don't know the severity of it or whatnot. If it is the uh, the quad, he'll be out for a while. I don't think it's the quad. Uh, Apparently, like, I think it's leaning more towards the hip injury, which means he, I reckon he could be out a month, maybe two. But, yeah, I, I don't think it's the quad injury. I think that was just suspected. Yeah, I, it did look like, right, you know, when he was struggling for the tag, uh, Andrade was straight there. Like I think the spot from that movie just did was going to be, I'm going to tag you in anyway. Because Andre Andrade kind of stood there a bit confused, like, come on, it's, you know, it's time for you to tag me. But I think whatever that move was, because he did, it was like a flying shoulder charge or, or lariat or something, I don't know. But as soon as he landed, he just kind of curled up and stopped. Yeah. And it, he, like, it took him a while to get to the tag. And as soon as he did, he rolled out the ring. That's the thing, he, didn't, like, even, yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. didn't even raise himself up to kind of take the tag. He just kind of rolled over and put his hand up. He couldn't even put any weight on himself, so... No, it, it was one of them, but in a, a bizarre turn, it made the match that I wasn't really giving a shit about a talking point. Yeah, so, I suppose it is a talking point, yeah. But, I mean, it's, we're talking about the injury, the genuine the injury. We're not talking about how good yeah. the match was, because it wasn't. No, no. <laughs> but did then, I, I don't know if at what point this commercial came up in the show. The draft. Yeah. I, I mean, why? I <laughs> Because because they need numbers at the end of the day. They need to get numbers and have you invested in watching Raw and SmackDown. Although I don't need investment in SmackDown at the minute because SmackDown's awesome. But Raw is boring as hell. So that's the reason. They're doing it to keep you invested and interested to see where people are going. It's not really going to amount to anything other than to try and get views on their product. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's because of the, the, the whole uh, COVID circumstances at the minute. But... To my knowledge, they're doing quite well this time with uh, keeping the drafts separate. But it's hard to keep track of still of who's on what show. It really is because it because it's all at the performance center or the Thunderdome or whatever. It all just kind of molds into one. So that, it won't surprise me if there's a lot of draft picks where I'll be like, "Shit, I thought they were already over there," or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but this might be an opportunity to freshen up the tag division for at least Raw. Oh, yeah, fingers because, crossed. I, I mean, just a, a side note that nothing happened with it on Clash Champions. I'm quite invested in this Mysterio Seth storyline. Uh, yeah, I mean, Even I saw, I saw, a, I saw a couple of like segments on Raw. Um, yeah. They're pushing forward with Ray's daughter. And I was, so I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but... Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what happens. It's something different, I suppose, and we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I, I am intrigued. I'm kind of concerned because if they're going to go for the whole romance thing, which it looks like they are, I'll be like, right, let's let's get this straight here. She's a 19-year-old girl, but he's 31. I mean, it's not illegal, but it's still a little bit... It's still a little bit... Uh, you know, uh. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just so, like, it's, it's she's like 11, 12 years older than her, and it's just like, hmm... This 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 reeks of Vince, doesn't it? Really, a little bit. Oh, totally, totally. But at the same time, interested. Uh, but with that being said, they they could mix it with this storyline or whatever. I would not be against seeing Dominic and Ray go for the Raw Tag Titles. That father son team uh, and dream of becoming tag champions. See, together. see, see, I would like that, and but I, I would like that, but that's. Screams a kind of mania type thing against heel t- t- title holders, but that means that the street profits have to lose it to a heel to build up to that. Or so, that's, yeah, which then I don't think. Mm. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, next was the SmackDown Women's Championship. Yes, yeah, so obviously it was meant to be Nikki Cross, but obviously she's off 
Uh, they they wishy washy kind of oh she's injured, but I'm pretty sure it's basically because obviously she's married to Killian Day, and I think Killian Day might be one of the guys that have contracted it in NXT. So it is what it is. It's unfortunate. Uh, but what they did, although it was more of a spot fest, not spot fest, but more of an angle than it was a match because it didn't go very long. It did what it needed to do. She said open yeah. challenge. And I honestly thought it would be just some randomer that would come out like Dana Brooke or some shit like that. And it would be all for nothing. Mm. So we can get to the angle where Sasha appears. But to have Asuka come out and pull double duty, again, this girl is just proving that during this pandemic era, if you're in a tight spot, you call upon Asuka. And she has been doing amazing work because of it. And like I said, it was an amazing match, but she came out and pulled double duty like an absolute champ. It was a lot of fun. And then to have Sasha come out and just try and wail on Bailey, even though she's still injured, and then Bailey wails on her, and then back and forth, and then Bailey runs up the ramp. It 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 was a means to an end, and fine. Um, it gets up to that point of the Sasha and Bailey again, so I, I'm fine with it. At the end of the day, we didn't expect Nikki to be taking this title, and we didn't expect it to be any more than a furthering of Sasha and Bailey anyway. So really, nothing's been lost. No. I, I will admit when they, you know, Bailey put, did the open challenge, I thought, okay, like I say, it's going to be Lacey or, God forbid, Tamina. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's meaner than Tamina. Yeah, but then yeah, the cogs began turning of like they're doing this uh, these vignettes of this woman that's obviously Carmella, um, and I thought mm, maybe they'll pull the trigger tonight, mm. and because it was building up to her debut. So it was like they could do a shock thing here. And then when Ask His Music hit, I genuinely shocked and in a good way. Yeah. Because like I said, not only double duty, but I thought, this is smart because she is genuinely the only one I can think of who could potentially beat Bailey. Because I just thought, why can't they do Ask Her with both belts? Yeah. Um, and then obviously. Yeah, I think they went through with the match itself. They said just purely cancelled it. They went through with the match itself for the Sasha spot, which is fine. And I'm that confident in the Sasha Bailey storyline that I was thinking, well, you know, why couldn't Sasha cost Bailey the women's championship? Um, obviously, you know, Bailey did. Uh, oh, she defeated Asuka by disqualification. Yes. Um, and then obviously Sasha comes out, swings the chair. It's building up that rivalry, it's building up to their match. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if the Nikki Cross Bailey match did go through, would they have done almost the same thing, but have Sasha interfere, cost Bailey the women's championship, so Nikki is women's champion? They go on to have you know non-title rivalry, Sasha versus Bailey. And Nikki goes on to have a women's championship rivalry with Alexa Bliss. Yeah, which I, I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been against it. Um because I think yeah. Sasha and Bailey are good enough as far as storylines is concerned to do it without a title. It's just yeah. it's just unfortunately it's paper thin and transparent and abundantly clear that they are doing it for the SmackDown title with this with that feud. There's that they definitely are. Uh, however, I, I honestly thought that it was going to be Alexa that was going to come out and cost Nikki the match. That was what I was assuming that was going to happen. Yeah, could have. I mean, uh, I just like, uh, you know, I think hopefully the plan if Nikki and Bailey had gone through, the fact that these storylines could finally intertwine, you know, it, it it's a r- rarity they do that now. Most storylines now are like, that's over, and now he's going to attack him. And their rivalry is going to start. I mean, well, well, hang on, why is he attacking him? Yeah. Where did it come from? And there's got to be a reason. And the reasons are there with the Sasha and Bailey and all that thing of like, oh, right, Sasha cost Bailey the women's championship because Bailey did this. Nikki's now champ, but now has to fight Alexa because Alexa's doing this. It writes itself. Yeah, like I said, um, I wouldn't be against it if it did happen. I think it's, it, it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, um, if by chance, Bailey loses the Women's Championship before Hell in a Cell. Yeah, you know, probably not going to happen, but say it happens, you have Sasha versus Bailey in Hell in a Cell. I think, that I'm, I'm down with that. I think that's a good match. There's no reason why, you know, there's been this talk of like, surely this should be happening at Mania. Yes. They could have their non-title match in the Cell, maybe leave it a few months, 
and then have the championship match at WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be. That's a nice way to spread it out. Also, that would kind of lean into the fact that maybe Sasha should be the one to win the Rumble to take on Bailey. Yeah, because I think they're building yeah. up to eventually all four horsewomen winning the Rumble. I think they're building up towards them eventually. All four of them will take that that accolade. So. I, I wouldn't be against that necessarily because I think that that's probably the right thing to do because you could have Sasha get her ass absolutely handed to her at Hell in a Cell. She goes away for quite a while and you just don't hear anything of her because she's so badly injured from that match because she's still injured at the moment with her neck. And then yeah. for her to come out at a random spot in the Rumble, that would be absolutely incredible. And then for her to win the whole thing and take on Bailey, that would be great. Yeah, it's it's one of them, though, it's like, okay... If, if it happened at Mania, it's like, well, okay, this is for the Women's Championship now. The stakes are raised. But how can you outshine a Hell in a Cell match? I'm not saying all Hell in a Cell matches are great, but, you know, you, you put your balls to the wall in a Hell in a Cell. Well, well you go do, you could have a different stipulation. I was going to say so, the stipulation that makes is quite an obvious one to do, being as it's been pushed through the storyline lately, it's a chairs match. Maybe I just I, I've always kind of thought chairs matches a bit stale, uh, especially for the stage like WrestleMania. I mean, they could go with the Iron Woman rematch, or better yet, have the first ever sixty minute Iron Woman match. Oh please, Which please do that. Is it's I wouldn't say it's a risk, but it'd be very interesting. I know Mania is a long pay per view anyway. But to take one hour of that pay per view for just one match. See, this is this is this is why we're leaning in that we should be doing a two night mania pay per view, like like we yeah. did last time. I think like, if we did two nights, then you could easily have that headline one of the one of the nights, and it wouldn't feel too over cumbersome because it, it splits it into your three four hours st- st- stints. Yeah, it, if mania became a two night thing, it's it's a no brainer to me that one of the nights the, uh, the men should headline, the other night the women should. Yeah, it, it's a no brainer to me. But, but yeah, uh, so Bailey's still your women's champion, but the the cogs are quickly turning for the Sasha Bailey match. Yes. Uh, next was the ambulance match. Yes. The now with this, I honestly thought that this was going to be the moment where Drew would actually lose it, purely because it still keeps him strong in the fact that he doesn't get pinned or submitted, so he gets chucked in the back of an ambulance. Uh, because mm-hmm. obviously we're still working with. What are they going to do with Drew in a case of making sure he gets his win back in front of a crowd like he deserves? Because I'm hoping that they're still pushing towards doing that because we all want that for him. Um, yeah. But to have him win this, um, interesting. Uh, the match itself was it was a lot of fun. Uh, there was barely any yeah. of it in the ring at all. Like most of it was up the ramp near the ambulance, just a little bit of backstage stuff. But the majority of it, you know, there was barely any in the ring at all. Uh, there was plenty of awesome spots. Um, I do. There was there was kind of a mixed bag with the Randy Orton "This Is Your Life" thing, with everybody coming out and attacking him at different <laughs> points during the thing. But for me, I was just smiling from ear to ear, going, "Of course this happens." As soon as Big Show attacked him, I was like, "Right, who's next?" Because I was looking forward yeah. to seeing who's going to get their revenge on him. And then Christian comes out and attacks him, and then later on, Shawn Michaels just sweet chins him, and then just to finish off that like nice little cherry on top of the cake that is this match to have Ric Flair going woo and driving off the ambulance yeah. with him in it. That was brilliant. I, I, lo- I loved it a lot. There was, you know, there's plenty of punts. There's plenty of claymores. There was plenty of awesome spots with the door coming off and almost getting Drew inside and forcing his way back out, blah, blah, blah. It even finished off really nicely with the final hit on Orton before putting him in the ambulance that it was a punt. It wasn't a claim when yeah. it took him out. So that's a nice end to that story of him punting him into the ambulance. Brilliant idea. Um, yeah, I, 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 I say I wouldn't say it was a click, but it was a lot of fun. This was the gimmick match and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was uh, thoroughly enjoyable. And at the end of the day, um, yeah, there might be some fans out there that every time they see a wrestling match, they want the wrestling clinic. But at the end of the day, I watch it to be entertained. Yes. And I was entertained. <laughs> So, yeah, like so, the the, the ambulance, uh, having an ambulance match, especially in this day and age anyway, is always risky because it's like, uh, it, it, you know, it's not exactly the best stipulation match. It's kind of like, all you got to do is throw someone in a shut door. Yeah. You know? so, yeah, the match started what it was, you know, it, it started pretty rough and tough. 
Um, stiff shots. Yeah, I did have the similar thing of like, you know, Randy's lost a lot here. Yeah, he has. Yeah, this this might be the time, but the way they did it with Big Show and Christian and all that getting involved was like, well, this is why he didn't win. You know, yeah, taking nothing off Drew, but it's like, okay, uh, you reap what you sow this time. Yes. So you might have been able to do it one on one against Drew. But because you fucked everyone off, these guys are here to kick your ass. Fuck you. So, yeah, when Big Show grabbed his ankle, I did think, like, it's a bit early on for interference here, isn't it? Then, like you said, like, ah. There's right, going to be okay, more. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, though. I found it weird with Big Show with no facial hair. Yeah, me too. Like, it's completely like bold. He just, he just, yeah, he just looked like an egg. It just, it was weird. Yeah, it was weird, but... So, yeah, I, it, they did it in a smart way that it didn't diminish Drew. It did, they didn't do it to the point of, like, Drew needs our help here. No. It was just, we want to kick off. Yeah, it was that. abundantly clear that Drew had no idea that they were going to make an appearance. So that's always good. Cause like, it's not like he teamed yeah, up on Orton and planned this whole thing. It's just they decided, no, fuck this, I'm getting involved, I don't care. Yeah, and I was fine with the backstage wrestling because I thought if there's ever a time to do it, you do it when you don't have to worry about the live audience sitting out there. Yeah. Because there isn't any. So, yeah, you have Christian like, come out of nowhere and just throw him over tables and shit. Uh, that's when it was like, okay, it's either Flair or, or Sean next. I, I thought Flair's might be a low blow, uh, but then I thought, is Flair even there? Because he's probably a high risk with what's going on. Um, but yeah, it, it was fun. Like you know, you've already said the spots with the door, and you know, getting on top of the ambulance and all that stuff. And Sean sends him crashing off the ambulance. Um, I did think, what if the last person to appear was Edge? See, I thought Edge um, because obviously he's been off for a while. I thought maybe like a final spear to put him away. But I also thought afterwards as well, like. Well, where was Keith Lee? Keith Lee was involved in this in some point, so why didn't Keith Lee come out and big bang catastrophe him or something? Um, yeah. I would have been happy with either, but to be honest, like, I don't take anything away from who they did involve and what they did with everything. I just thought that maybe they could have chucked one more in. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I don't know Edge's status either. I mean, quite early on in the match, uh, perhaps apparently people on Twitter go in, I'm um, saying it now, Edge is in the back of the ambulance. But as soon as they open the doors, it's like, ah, right, that was there. Okay, there's not going to be that big surprise of, you know, boom or whatever. Um, with Keith Lee, the only thought that came through my head, because obviously him and Drew have kind of hit rough territory recently, I thought, okay, you've got all these people attacking Orton to the point that he's going to be fucked with the amount of people that's been battering him. After the last attack, you could have Drew hit the Claymore for the, like, the the cherry on top of the cake, like you say. And then I thought, what if Keith comes out of nowhere, attacks Drew, and Orton still manages to slither out with the championship because Keith costs Drew. Now, it's a risky move turning Keith Lee... Obviously, they didn't do it, but it would have been a risky move to turn Keith Lee heel right now. No, it's the worst option, but, worst time to do it. But you say that, they did that with The Rock in 98, and oh my God, it worked so well. Yeah, I suppose, uh, yeah, you got a point, but I don't know, I just, I feel like Keith Lee's a little bit different. I don't know, I just, I don't think, I don't know where... It's because don't want him to. Yeah, probably, yeah, it's probably, it's, yes, yes, probably like, I don't really want him to, because to be honest, if you think about it, we've got quite a lot of heels at the moment, there's not a lot of faces out there. No, that's true, I, I mean, that's probably why they didn't go with it, I mean, um... Yeah, when it comes to a face you genuinely really love turning heel, it's not about, you know, what best for business suddenly goes out the window. It's like, no, as a fan, fuck you. How could you do this to us? Yeah. It was the same when Austin shot up Vince's hand at 17, like, fuck you. This is not how it goes down. <laughs> so, yeah, but no, obviously it didn't go down that way. The match was very enjoyable. Not a wrestling clinic, like I, I said, but it didn't have to be. It no. wasn't designed to be. No, not and at all. You were still your WWE champion. Yes. And that, that's cool. Yes, it is good. Now, main event time. Oh, my this God. I mean, Christ. I, I literally can't... I was thinking about this the other day, um, like literally not long after the match. I thought to myself, if someone had told me 
that the main event of a pay-per-view was going to be a heel Roman Reigns against Jey Uso from a tag uh, the division going against one of the biggest titles on the card and having mm. an amazing story told. Like, I, I would have gone, well, you're mental. It's never going to happen because that doesn't seem like what Vince would want. But Christ, this was all kinds of awesome. It was... Awesome on a storyline standpoint, where they just had this domination of Reigns, of him being heel and everything. He's, he's talking, um, he's the way he's kind of shaking off moves and everything. You had this kind of plucky underdog of Jay getting his offense in every now and then, and giving that ever so slight glimpse of like, will he do this? And then, yeah. and then just to have this like absolute beat down in the end with Jimmy coming out and throwing in the towel. And then I just, there was everything about it, like getting to call him the tribal chief, um, even down to him, like pointing at the ref and said, don't make me address you again. Just everything about oh, that, nice. just everything was just I was like, I can't believe we haven't had this already. Why is it taking so long for us to get to this point with Reigns where we're going, oh my God, why haven't you done this sooner? This was, everything about it was awesome. There was loads of awesome spots. There was great wrestling to be had. There was great stories to be told. Everything about this ticked every single box that it needed to tick. It didn't make Jay look stupid in defeat because he technically didn't tap, tap or um, get pinned. Uh, the story was told well. It made Reigns look like the most dominant heel that has ever been. I, I literally, I can't, I can't stress enough how awesome this was and how this was the the best story told in a match this year. A hundred percent. I. Uh... Again, <laughs> I, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this match, again, uh, primarily wasn't designed to be a wrestling clinic either. The wrestling wasn't bad by any means necessary. Yeah, it, it was... Jay's always a good wrestler. Roman's okay. Um, the wrestling match... If, if we're just going looking at the, the pure wrestling, it was, yeah, your bog standard match kind of thing. But as far, as far as storytelling, this is the best storytelling I've seen in years yeah, in one match. Definitely. Uh, the only two times I can... As someone mentioned probably the best thing since the whole Dustin Cody story in AEW. And in my head, probably... you know, it, It's one thing to start a story and then have the match. It's one thing to continue the story or, or end the story in the match itself. Um, you know, Kate, one of my best examples is where Triple H versus Taker in the cell with Sean being the ref. They told that story of Triple H is that desperate and sadistic that he could do it, but Sean's bang in the middle of, I'm your best friend, but I'm going to call it down the middle. Great story. This was the great story of uh, Jay is finally elated that not only has he got his chance at the championship, but he's fighting his family for it. It's a dream come true for him. This is the story of Roman don't give a damn whether you're blood or not. Yeah. And the the, final, the whole big bullet point here for you know casual fans or fans anywhere really is if Roman can be that cold-hearted towards his own family... He's going to be cold-hearted to everybody else. Yeah, and that it, is that, it, that is the main thing I took away from this, is that this is the whole point of this match, this this feud, that is pretty much a one and done, I assume. The whole point of it was to show if he's willing to go to these lengths against his blood, what you think he's willing to do to anybody else. And that is how you build an absolutely diabolical heel in Roman Reigns. Yeah. Like, it, it just absolutely was perfect, even down to his talking. Like, because normally whenever he talks, the stuff they give him, it's just like, oh, my God, it's so crap. But with this, they just I felt like they just kind of like, look, just go out there and be dominant and be dominant in your words as well. And he just he did it amazingly. Like every single time that he was getting aggressive with his words and saying stuff to Jay, to the ref, to 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 Heyman, to Jimmy, like everything about it I was just like. God, you are nailing this and nailing it in such a way that I just, I, I don't want to see Reigns in any other way now. I can't, I, I just, I, I love this kind of Roman Reigns. I don't ever want it to go away. It was awesome. I, I, I think there's a possibility of a face Roman again, but not for a long time. No, not for at least um, three years minimum. Yeah, the, yeah, maybe even longer than that, because it's got to be to the point of 
he he gets that good at being a heel that people like him, similar to the situation with Kevin Owens. Yes. Uh, to the point that they keep him heel, keep him heel, keep him heel, and then when he does turn, we're still so much on the Roman Reigns bandwagon that it's like, well, we're cheering the fuck out of him now because we actually like him. He's earned our respect. He's earned our, our uh, fanfare. We're, on, we're, we're behind him now. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if, Ro- if Roman came up with what he said himself, then all the credit in the world to him. More than likely, probably Paul Heyman gave him the pointers. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I'd say there's definitely some Paul Heyman fingers in that pie. Yeah, definitely not a Vince thing. No, no way. No way. Like so what I really like from it, you know, obviously it got to the point where Jay was, you know, coming back every now and then with super kick splashes and whatnot, and Roman was kind of looking not you know, in pain or whatever, and not really shocked, but more like, all right, really, we're going to do this. Okay. Um, so he got to the point where he's just beating the shit out of him. Uh, like I say, mouthing off to the ref, to the point I thought, maybe Jay's going to get this with a disqualification victory here, and Roman just uppercuts the ref or something. <laughs> um, and then when he's obviously saying, call me the chief and it's over. Call me the chief, I'm the head of the table, Call me the tribal chief, I'll put you out of your misery. Puts Jay over more of like, not going to happen. Yeah. You know, standing his ground despite what's happening, gets him over, gets in the sympathy boat, all that stuff. When Heyman in the corner starts going, you're the chief, man, and you're you the man, and all that kind of stuff. When Roman's like, I don't want to hear it off you. I want to hear it off him. Yeah. That, to me, is kind of like, I, I, it's hard to describe because obviously the only other person you can pair Heyman with is Lesnar. And that dynamic is Lesnar does hear Heyman. Lesnar's obviously the alpha of the two, but he, he kind of doesn't acknowledge it. Yeah. He, he will listen to Heyman, but it will be like the devil on his shoulder kind of thing. So it's like, you're there, I know you're there, I hear what you're saying, but let me just do what i got to do. All right? With Roman, it's almost like he's made Heyman his bitch. Yeah, and I like that. Like Even when it came out at the start, the fact that Heyman didn't introduce him like he does with Lesnar, I like the fact that they're going with a different story here with these two because I don't want it to be Lesnar 2.0. I want it to have its own kind of flavour to it, and they are doing it correctly. There is a different relationship with these two than there is with Lesnar, and I like that. Yeah. Les, as, as good as Lesnar is, because let's face it, whether it's kayfabe, non-kayfabe, at, at, in this world, Brock Lesnar is the man. He will kick anyone's ass that he wants to. Um, but in WWE, it's almost like, despite everything Lesnar can do physically, he needs Paul Heyman yes. to be Brock Lesnar. They, maybe not right now, but the way it's building up, is building up to the point that Paul Heyman needs Roman Reigns to be relevant to get that spotlight. Yep. Um, so the only way I can think this is getting, yeah, the way it ended was fantastic. With throw the towel in or this continues. Obviously, the first Jimmy says no, goes to batter the shit out of him, towel comes in, and it, it kind of took Jimmy to uh, call Roman the chief for Roman to go, I'll back off now. Yeah. Um, what I mean, I don't know the extent of Jimmy's injury. I know he's still kind of on the, the shelf at the minute. But I would love to see whether it happens in the cell or not. I don't really mind. If the Usos go, you know, you've made this personal now. We were blood. You know, we were family. You've just turned the back on all of us. And Roman agrees to fight both the Usos in a handicap match for the Universal Championship. The storyline with that can go, the Usos go, you know what? We know what family is. It doesn't matter which one of us win the championship. We're doing this to whip your ass. Uh, but Roman still kicks the shit out of both of them. So at Clash of Champions, it means that the whole point of that match was to get Roman over as the definitive heel that he now is. And the handicap match, if it goes ahead, is the match that puts Roman over as the strong big dog that takes no shit, 
and will whip your ass. Yeah. Because that's all they wanted Roman to be from the get-go. Yeah. They wanted the fans to believe that he's this superhuman beast that can take on the likes of Brock Lesnar. So in his face character, or whatever character he had, the fans were just going, nah, not having it. Yeah, not but now, but so now I am fully believing it. it. Yeah, it wasn't something we could get behind with that. Now this is something we can get behind. It's like, yeah, be this unstoppable heel brute force that is sadistic, that has no mercy, to the point that if Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns happens at WrestleMania, if Roman's that good um, as be, at being a heel, you want Bray to kick his ass. Yeah. I'm like, yes, Roman, you're a monster, but Bray's a monster too. Yeah. But also give you that sense of doubt of, well, yeah, Bray's a monster, but Roman's good too. Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's the perfect yeah. build because if you're generally sitting on the fence going, I, I, I have no idea which way this is going to swing, that instantly invests you. Yeah, this is, if they, what they did with Goldberg and Fiend, if that had never happened, but, because, uh, yeah, I think on a SmackDown, Goldberg put the Fiend down with the spear and the Fiend didn't get up. If they'd saved it for so long, for years, that every time the Fiend got hit with a move, he'd pop right back up. But then Roman, out of all people, hits the spear and it means, and Bray can't get back up. That's when the fans are going, well, hang on a minute. Yeah. yeah, this could be the guy, you know. So there's a lot of potential. The 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 match itself was a great story, and the character build up of Roman Reigns has just skyrocketed yeah. so much. It's 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 second to none at the moment. I, I'm, I, honestly, I've I've said this before. Roman Reigns is the best thing in WWE at the moment, and I can't believe yeah. I'm saying How crazy it. How is that that we're saying that? Yeah. Um, before we go yeah. on to like the the kind of scoring the end of this and everything, I do quite like as well a little added thing. Where he low blowed him on the kick out. Oh, I didn't see that. Did you not see it? If you go back, no. he like as he as as Reigns kicks out, his shoulder goes up, but he does it with such force that he low blowed Jay. Ah, so go back and check yeah. it. I thought that's a nice use of it because that means the ref didn't quite see it because it's technically a kick out, so you can misconstrue it as an accident. So I, I like that. I thought that was a nice little bit of extra flavor into the match. Yeah, yeah, I didn't notice that at all. But yeah, it, it just adds more to his heel persona. 100%. Yeah. So, yes, ratings. Yes. Um, like I said, there was a kind of bit in the middle where there's a few matches that were kind of just there and they were just all right. But there was nothing yeah. there in this pay-per-view that was outright terrible. Um, yeah. But the, the, the triple threat ladder match, the main event, the ambulance match... All of that was so awesome. Um, it did everything it needed to do, and then some. This, for me, is probably one of my favourite pay-per-views of the year, I think. Um, and I'm going to give it... I think it's probably been... I'm pretty sure this is my highest mark this year. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I, I think this was a solid pay-per-view, this. It was really, really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm toying with 7.5 and, and 8, really, because... Um, hmm... It's it's difficult right now because they said the US title match didn't really stand out a lot for me. Um, the Raw Women's did what it needed to do, as did the SmackDown Women's really. So they were kind of matches that were just there. Um, but then even though it's a even though it's a negative, the Angel Garza uh, injury and complete fuck up of the raw tag title things gave me some interest, you know, as far as just the interest in the pay per view goes. So, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. Okay, I, I nearly gave it an eight, but I, just, I can't, I can't really stretch it. Really, it's a very high seven and a half. Yeah, nearly eight. It, yeah, really, really. Yeah, I think overall this is. Definitely one of the better ones of the year. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, um, I mean, we got three weeks to handle this out. So, yeah, they've got enough time to build up the, the rest of the stories and characters. Yeah, so. definitely. So, yeah, very, very impressed with what they managed to do in this in this pay-per-view. Yeah. And just as a quick side note, um, Kurt Angle on the Broken School Sessions is Stone Cold. Fantastic. One I of, keep meaning to watch these Broken School things. I keep forgetting to watch them. I need That's- to. 
they're, they're not all of them are great. All of them are interesting, but not you know. Sometimes they're interesting. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that, but whatever. Kurt Angle is fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna check so, it out. Um, stuff I didn't know about, like threatening to kill Vince and all this kind of <laughs> shit. Well, I'm pretty sure there's been plenty of people that have wanted to do that in the past. Yeah, but like, oh, proper, like he was like ready to kill him, kind yeah. of thing. So, but yeah. So yeah, that's Clash of Champions for Yes, you. that's it. Um, we'll be back. I think we'll probably do another lockdown one soon. We could do one end of the week, maybe start next, something like that. Yeah, I'll have to think some questions or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, it's potentially a bright future going forward for WWE at the moment. Yeah, fingers crossed. 100%. Um, so yeah, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll be back either within a few days or in a week or so. But yeah, just watch this space and we'll be back very soon. And share. Share. Share, share cock. Share yeah. cock. <laughs> Bye. Bye.